Hello everyone and welcome back to another A Masi Chess Game by Mikhail Tal, the magician from Riga. And this is actually one of the earliest chess games of Mikhail Tal from 1949. And Tal has the white pieces and his opponent is Leonov. An unknown chess player, so Mikhail Tal starts the game with pushing the e-pawn. C6, the Karakan defense. Exchange variation of the Karakan defense. Developing the knight. Pushing the pawn, h6, Tal is not allowing bishop to g4, and Leonov is not allowing bishop to g5. Developing the bishop, e6, knight to f3, bishop to d6, exchanging the bishops, c3, knight to c6, and Mikhail Tal castled, also Leonov castled. Queen to e2, rook to e8, knight in, queen to c7, and Tal is cementing the center with pushing the pawn. Well, Leonov didn't want to allow the knight standing on e5 and he captured the knight. F takes on e5, defending the knight, but queen in and the queen is looking dangerously too close to the king. And defending with the rook, knight up and in this position Mikhail Tal's fantasy is bringing his knight on b5 and then maybe knight to d6 and this knight is looking dangerous for Leonov. So Leonov is pushing the pawn and not allowing knight to b5, knight to c2 and remaneuvering the knight. Knight to e3 and then knight to g4 is the plan. Queen to d7 and isn't this just simply blocking the bishop? But actually in this position if something like bishop to d7 this is actually a losing move for black so can you see what white plays here? What would you do in this position? White is actually winning on the spot if developing the bishop, if bishop to d7. Then simply bishop takes on h7 and king takes on h7 after check then rook takes on f7. And this is losing for black. Uh, white is much better, so this bishop is simply disconnecting the queen and the rook and landing on f7. Okay, so in this position, actually developing is not that easy. So we have queen to d7, knight to e3, and simply queen to e8, and planning to develop the bishop. And then it is going to be, then black is probably going to be a happy man. So what would you do in this position? Actually, Tal's moves was simply crazy moves. So maybe I should not even ask you what would you do in this position? Well, Mikhail Tal is offering a gift for his opponent. And he played Rook to F6. What a move by Mikhail Tal. And the gift was not accepted and actually this was a spectacular sacrifice by Mikhail Tal but if black can defend accurately, maybe white is the one who is going to be in trouble. So we have queen to f8. So this was one of the risky moves of Mikhail Tal and what happens if capturing the rook with the pawn. Then pawn takes pawn and this is attacking the rook and threatening something like capturing the pawn attacking the knight and also attacking on g7 so what else but to capture the pawn so this is also attacking the rook so knight takes on f6 but capturing the pawn both attacking the knight and if you make a mistake like moving the knight then basically black is in trouble because as you can see this is looking dangerous attacking on f7 so knight to e4 blocking the bishop is actually the most accurate move in this position then bishop takes knight and in this position if you capture the bishop which is a tempting move then knight to g4 and this was the idea of Mikhail Tal but if you are playing against a computer a computer move is never going to be capturing the bishop but in this position a human can definitely take the bishop and threatening knight to f6 checkmate how on earth are you going to be able to defend Knight to f6, checkmate. So actually this is the only defense for not getting checkmated, but this is actually losing the queen. Knight takes on e8. 
Okay, so in this position after bishop takes on e4, what was that move? What was the computer move? Well, did you see f5? And after defending the bishop, you can see there is no knight on g4. And actually black is surviving, but the bishop can also join the attack. But perhaps black is going to play queen to f8, offering to exchange the queens. And actually, basically, black has the exchange. And this is winning for black. White is white is little bit worse. So white also has one extra pawn. But okay. So Mikhail Tal simply sacrificed the rook. Rook to f6. But in this position, because of that reason, which was risky, of course, capturing the rook is also going to create some attacking prospects for white not capturing the rook. And this time, indeed, black is perhaps threatening to capture the rook because black is defending on h6. So Mikhail Tal is defending the rook. Rook to f8, rook to f4, bishop to d7, finally developing the bishop and knight to g4. And the knight is joining the attack. Bishop to e8. And in this position, black is maybe threatening to push the pawn, attacking the queen. What now? Well, Mikhail Tal said, I send you a gift, a present, but you didn't take it. You didn't like it. How about the knight as a present? <laughs> knight to f6. Check. And this is forking the king and the knight, so what else but to take the knight. Knight takes on f6. But I want to show you this variation as well. If g takes on f6, then rook check, only move, and then capturing the pawn, attacking the rook and also threatening rook to g7. If rook to g7, basically black is lost. So if rook to g7, attacking the knight and also blocking the queen and attacking the h pawn. So knight takes on f6. What else? But here comes this very strong move. Queen to e5. The knight is pinned, pinning the knight to the king. And basically, there is no sensible defense. Rook is also occupying the g file, threatening to capture the knight. And then basically, black is getting checkmated. So the only defense is perhaps defending with the queen. Rook takes queen. So, okay, this is also losing. After knight to f6, we have knight takes on f6, capturing the knight, defending the rook. Black didn't want to open the g-file, but Tal is opening the g-file anyway, capturing the pawn and threatening to take the pawn, attacking the queen. King takes on g7. Uh, of course, in this position, if capturing the pawn with the queen, then rook to g4, pinning the queen to the king, winning the queen and the chess game. King takes on g7, Mikhail Tal played the move and black resigned. Tal played queen to e5, check. Black throw in the towel. Because of this continuation, if pushing the pawn, capturing the rook. That was forking the king and the rook. And in this position, if something like king to g8, then rook check and nasty check. Because this is the only defense. Capturing the queen, check, mate. There is no defense. What a fantastic attack by Mikhail Tull. What a game. And this was one of the earliest chess games of Mikhail Tull. You can see he was a sacrificial, aggressive chess player. A risky, daring, relentless attacker. A brave, brave attacker. Did you see this move? Rook to f4. Rook to f6. Rook to f6 was the move of Mikhail Tal at move 19. And then Mikhail Tal said, okay, you didn't like the rook, how about the knight? As a present. What a kind man. Offering presents and gifts for his opponent. <laughs> Very kind man. So, Basically, in this position, black resigned after queen to e5. And thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, and bye-bye.